I'm about to go above the water. Look at me, I'm shining. Hello people. You're about to witness probably one of the hardest videos Meanwhile on the other stage has ever done so far. This video is going to be something that we, along with lots of other people, were waiting for more than a year and a half now. We'll talk about The Odyssey, a film by Vincent Haycock, based on and inspired by the album How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful of the British band Florence and the Machine, with its extremely talented singer-songwriter Florence Welsh in the lead. On 24th of April, we finally saw the last chapter, as well as a full film. What I'm about to tell you in this video is a mix of my perceptions of what was the Odyssey about throughout all the time, since the very first season How Big How Blue, till the release of full 40 minutes long film, and also of what I read and heard about it, all the different thoughts and opinions, alone with interviews from the director Vincent Haycock and Florence Welsh herself. I wanted to start with the teaser which was released first back in February 2015, but seeing the chapter sequence now, it's actually not the beginning of the film. The beginning text place in Los Angeles, California. Between a crucifix and a Hollywood sign where the venue Hollywood Bowl is. This epic, tragically beautiful and full of different kinds of love story starts here. The Odyssey in bright bloody red letters is welcoming us to relief and to feel something very deep and personal. We see Florence and her lover in the present in LA. She's confused and lost a little bit. Behind them there's this storm coming. LA is about to be covered in rain and thunder. The man though doesn't really care about it. He tries to bring her attention towards him, to open her, but she's distanced from her lover. She's kind of struggling within their relationship. She's waiting for that storm to hit her. We see Florence and her lover in the past, probably in the 50s. She's lively, she's looking at him with love. They're discussing whether something catastrophic survived together in real life, held people, lovers, to get closer to each other, to make their relationship stronger. The man says that he saw Florence suffering in her sleep, but he decided not to wake her up because he felt like she needed to deal with it by herself. Notice that the storm is also there. It's gloomy and it's raining. She asks him, but what if they're lovers creating the disaster within themselves? What happens in this case? Does it bring people closer or makes them suffer even more? Back in the present in LA, they're in the car again. She's free to walk or something. We see her in her performance clothes, just like we see her on the stage or at the interviews. It's a real Florence. Her man is there waiting for her in a car. She's telling him about that storm that follows her everywhere around. It's calm but I never know when it's going to change, she says. The storm is actually follows this relationship around all the chapters of the story. Raining, thunder, the weather forecast on TV. And what is interesting is that the actual weather storm was surrounding Florence in real life while she was recording this album. You can google St. George's storm and read more about it. There's many many real existing things in her life transferred into the narrative of the Odyssey and the album. That's why it's so deeply personal kind of naked, very different from two previous albums. The editing of What Kind of Man is very fragmentary. In the cuts we'll see all the different sides of this relationship. The sexual, sometimes very dark, seducing side. There still exists in tenderness between the two. Her man being kind of apart and Florence being anxious about something. Something that she may feel already, but still scared to say out loud. This say out loud thing is represented by one of the distinctive choreography movements, with Florence touching her lips with her fingers and putting them on the lips of her lover. Or the same backwards. This movement will repeat during the Odyssey a couple of times. The amazing choreography by Holly Blakely and Ryan Huffington is very emotion powered and very meaningful. All of a sudden we're shocked and hurt as we see the car in the present on the streets of LA with Florence and her lover crash. There it is, it hit her. This sequence was Florence being surrounded by all these unknown aggressive and possessive men fighting her, blinding her. Or the scene with her on the mattress facing all of those men is a representation of all the struggles she has and them hunting her down and separating her from her love. The choreography again, the movement when two persons, in this video Florence and one of those men, are trying to reach each other but instead they're clashing, colliding, kind of going through without actually facing each other. I think it represents this feeling when you're trying to reach and understand someone you care about a lot but you're just involved in this too much, you're too close to see it. Florence is trying to deal with her problems but they're all over her, they're absorbing her life. Also the movement where Florence and her man are slowly getting closer to each other and she pushes him away. Florence described it as this constant struggle when you can't fully understand each other and be whole. It happens again and again as a loop. 
The theme of something being constantly repeating is also a key one in the Odyssey. Or the movement with Florence taking something out of her mouth could represent self-destruction, which is caused by everything bad around her and in her. Self-destruction is also one of the key topics in the Odyssey, as well as on the How Big How Blue album. Florence talked about this chaotic period in her life after the end of the ceremonials tour. It was very self-destructing, confusing, hot and dark. She escaped from it through art, which we now can hear and see in the film. The the true chaos starts with this car crash. Florence crawls out of the car, she's led by her inner demons. The next chapter starts. In the full film it's Florence just after the car crash, crossing a bridge, singing How Big How Blue in a cappella. The bridge is also symbolic, cause everything in the Odyssey is symbolic, you know? Usually bridges represent something like a path between two worlds or a big change in your life. In the film, I think it represents both. Also, we see Florence and a couple of baptism witches in Mexico, according to the interview. They're performing some sort of ritual in the ocean, trying to clear her mind to purify her soul. All the terrible things in her life in her head. That's how chapter two is in the film. But according to the official Vivo channel, chapter two is the teaser video with how big, how blue, how beautiful. So we'll talk about it too, because it's a very symbolic and important piece and obviously it's connected with the narrative. In the teaser we see two Florences, to be more precise, we see Florence and her wild, self-destructive, raging all over the place, other self. This other Florence will make an interest in a few future videos. There's also a very meaningful interest in setting, a synergy with arena built inside of it. It's believed that this kind of setting we use as a portal between the worlds of dead and living, hell and earth. She's there to travel through it, to the hell and back. This journey topic will appear in future chapters too. We see Florence on the stage, she notices her other self. She reaches her, starts getting to know her better by touching and smelling her. They're both trying to merge kind of, fighting in between. Notice the dance moments is the same as in what kind of man. We see how even though they fight sometimes, they're still both parts of the same person. They hug, they synchronize, one Florence isn't leaning on another. We see topic of self-destruction emerges again, with dance movement of Florence beating herself with feasts. And notice how the dark Florence closes her eyes and leads in her. The original Florence is blinded by the problems again. In the end of the teaser we see Florence saying goodbye to her as a self and entering the dark cave. Could be a metaphor of a dark period in her life. After which, look, she's on the stage of the arena again and there's no other Florence. She's gone. It's just her. She's free at last. It's kind of a spoiler for the film. Also, there's beautiful shots of nature in this video, especially the sky. It's big, blue and beautiful, and it surrounds them. Back to the Odyssey and Saint Jude, which is chapter three. The chapter starts with the sky. Florence is probably other self, is half naked, merged with nature, appreciating the big blue sky, the outside world. She's embracing it. In the interviews, it was confirmed that, that Saint Jude was inspired by Dante's Inferno. Basically, there's nine circles of hell and Dante's traveling down to the core and Florence is going through the circles too at least some of it the first one limbo is actually not that bad it's kind of like a defective heaven could this be a representation of a state like everything's not that bad there's good things in her life there's hope which could be in this video represented by children but looking over it you can actually still feel that this is hell and you are in it there's stones in the pattern of cyclone or hurricane on the second circle of hell there's lost sinners. They're tortured by wind and storm. The state of battling the wind is like having a lust for someone. By looking at the clothes and setting, we can say that this video is set in the past. Maybe those time swaps shows that this has been going for a while now, repeating itself like a loop again. Florence is carried by her man. There's storm in the house. The couple is trying to reach each other. Look at the known dance movement. The man disappears, letting Florence go suffer alone in this hell. Just like he's had to decided not to wake her up from her nightmare in what kind of man. On the fourth cycle, the sinners are doomed to drag heavy stones. We can see man doing the same in the video. We also see other Florence on her knees on the steps of the church. She's trying to find her right way by maybe approaching such powerful forces as religion or just something spiritual. She's carried by her man again, who's freely letting her go. She says goodbye to him with tender. She does it reasonably. Just after that, a native old man asks her whether she's lost and why she's alone. The lyrics which are all incredibly symbolic too, answer that she's letting loss reveal it. She suffers alone, lost. Now she feels like she needs that storm, the same Jude, to understand what's going on and to get out, to escape. She's going towards the freedom and big blue sky but helplessly falls on her knees. 
She sees the right way out of hell now, but she's still not strong enough to get out of it. The birds are also going in circles, in the loop. There's this flashback with the car in the rain, and we see Florence crawling out of the storm to salvation, represented by the church. Originally, those shots were in separated part chapter of What Kind of Men. Ship to Wreck chapter starts. We are in London, in the present. Florence's life is kind of always between Los Angeles and London, and the storm is here again. It follows her all around the world. She's in the rain, alone, soaked, exhausted. And now we're in a house. This is an actual Florence Welch house if you were interested. This chapter is pulling us more and more into the self-destruction phase. We see Florence dragged out, pills on the floor. Everything around her is a mess. She's confused. She doesn't want to disturb her lover's sleep. She's looking at herself in the mirror and it seems like she's disappointed. She shakes her head in denial and tries to wash her hands to clean herself. But it doesn't work, even when she's getting into the bath. There's no water to clean her out and she feels helpless. We're back in the bedroom and we see the other Florence, the chaotic one. She woke her men up and she's fighting with them. Then in the wardrobe we see normal Florence again, who's been a little bit frustrated. Do one more, she asks him, hinting something sexual with her movements, being vulgar a little bit. Like if the only thing that keeps their relationship is sex now. Her lover begs her to stop and to calm herself, but she pushes him away and tries to hide herself from the situation. The chaotic Florence is thrown close to him furiously. The normal Florence is about to to relax and read a book, but everything around her stops her from doing that. The other Florence is in all that lust she feels with her lover, but the peaceful Florence is coming over to stop it, though she loses to her bad side who's screaming, pushing her man away and tearing her house apart. In the kitchen there's family and friends. Florence seems happy, but her destructive side is again ruining everything. Now we see that it's not only affecting her or her partner, but also the closest people in her life. In the video you can see some actual Florence Welsh family members, by the way. Then, while it's hairs inside the house, outside, in the garden, Florence is finally at peace, tired of all the exhausting life with its troubles. Her man reaches her, we see the no movement. They're trying to get closest they could, but once again she pushes him away. She's smiling and seems content, as if the chaos is a little bit enjoying to her now. In the end of the chapter, Florence is chased by her bad side. It slowly deprives all the power from her, and she helplessly falls down on a messy floor with Beals next to her. The very same scene that opened the chapter. We understand that it's going on for over and over, like on the loop again. The self-destruction doesn't stop. Next chapter, Queen of Peace, takes place in the past again. We are in Scotland, Florence's homeland. This chapter is about this kind of love, which is seemingly so naive and so pure that you feel yourself like a little kid. This childish side is also part of Florence's personality. So in this video, instead of having bad and good Florence, we see her youth spirit she has. This video is pretty much a family Romeo and Juliet-like drama. Florence's family doesn't approve her choice and tries to keep her away from her lover. We see her on the edge of a cliff, she cries, she seems desperate. The big blue sky and the big blue ocean, the freedom is out there, but it doesn't feel closer. The young Florence, dressed the same, is going towards the cliff, reaching for freedom, still having hope for it. The older Florence is reaching to her lover instead, maybe thinking that he will free her. She gives that love away to her youthful, hopeful little self. The fact that both families are fighting each other in the chapter made me think that they sort of knew from the start that this relationship won't last and won't make either Florence or her man happy. So maybe they should have been listening to her, their mothers and fathers. But anyway, it's too late. They're deeply and purely in love, just like little kids. Florence in this video is Queen of Peace as she tries to calm everyone down but she can't even get inside this circle she's outside of it and only can keep trying to convince everyone to stop and it's so hard that she's weak afterwards falling on her knees in front of her lover the family hides Florence in the house and she feels trapped inside touching the walls and looking outside the window we see the family relationship as well Florence's deep love for all the members of the family funny how the young Florence pushes away her brother because there's always some fighting between the kids later we see Florence and her dad and they're crying and as the camera pulls back we see that her dad decided to accept her choice he holds her lover by the hand and she's very thankful then again we see the difficult relationship between Florence and her man I don't think that the choreography needs a lot of explanation here all the movements are very self-explainable there's just this deep feeling of miscommunication both love each other but their love is doomed on the family picture nobody's happy and both Florence's are holding daffodils in their hands the symbol of change is a new beginnings 
but also the symbol of unrequited love. The young, naive Florence might hold the flowers because she thinks that now they're finally together, both families will stop hating each other. But the grown-up Florence is holding daffodils because she feels like there's something really wrong in their love. The young kids run away from their families towards the edge of the cliff, towards freedom. They love each other so blindly, they don't see anything in anyone else. The night scene in the rain shows us that the families are still attacking the couple and Florence's father screaming at her lover now. It all went really bad in the end. After that we hear Florence's poem about love. To give yourself over to another body, that's all you want really. To be out of your own and consumed by another, to swim inside the skin of your lover. Not have to breathe, not have to think, but you can't live on love and salt water is no drink. The intense love has a destroying element in it. If you love someone too much and you're completely absorbed and possessed by it, it won't make your life happy. This intense love is like a notion that fully consumes you, but you need to survive in it and you start drinking the water, but it's too salt, it's undrinkable and you suffer. Long and lost chapters about Florence being taken away from her love, being out, free, but even here she still feels strapped. She's hysterical, pushes close people away, doesn't hear anyone. She helplessly reaches the sky again in the end. We dine of thirst so we feast on each other. The sea is still our violent mother. The blood run here pours down like water. Each wave a lamp leads to the slaughter. And like children that she just can't teach, we break and break and break and break ourselves upon the beach. The poem here continues to talk about destroying love and the metaphor of the sea as the mother, the family, appears here. The mother tries to warn her children of danger and bad things, but they escape anyway and violently break over and over again, like waves upon the beach. Mother chapter begins and we're back in the present in LA. We're back with the Florence after the car crash. She's on the bridge again, she continues her journey from hell to earth. There's no escape from this journey. Other bridge has high barriers from which you can't simply jump off. Florence end up in the motel, she thinks about staying there, like if she's so tired of battling this constant chaos that she's ready to accept it and rest within. The motel in the whole Delilah chapter illustrates Florence's final days in the purgatory. She is truly lost now, she's without her men, doesn't know what to do next and how to pull out. She's wandering around the place searching for something. The wise old motel guest suggests that for finding peace, she firstly needs to start loving and accepting herself perhaps find her other self and embrace her. In the room we see Florence cutting her lover's hair. This is a reference to the story in the Bible about Samson and Delilah. Samson's power was in his hair so Delilah cuts it off. In the narrative of the Odyssey it might mean that Florence is finally done with that man. He has no power over her anymore. Look at him trying to blind her and it doesn't work. This way she kind of kills him as we see his lifeless body on the bed. With the start of the song we see these different shots like Florence in the room alone with her other self. She's trying to approach her then she's powerless in her arms and looking worried kind of like if she's scared of facing her issues. And then finally they hug each other. Florence with all the different women on the bed which clearly symbolizes all the powerful and aspiring females who've helped her through the tough times. In opposite, the shots with Florence on the bed and all the men around her shows that his struggles don't possess her anymore. They stand still. It's all very calm. As we see Florence banging her head against the chair and sort of praying intensively at the same time. I think this movement showcases the desperate need to get out of this tremendous loop in which you feel stuck. It's like banging your head against the wall, trying to make your mind right and break out at the same time. The demon really reminds me of the paintings which illustrates nightmares and the state of sleep paralysis. Florence can't move and the demon is blocking her ability to breathe. All this time she was like under the spell where terrible scary stuff was happening around her but she wasn't able to do anything about it. Just like when you're having a sleep paralysis. She starts moving, she gets out and she meets men along the way who try to take control over her again but she escapes from them now. Florence is energetic, she runs, screams, there's no obstacles in front of her. She's looking for someone. She faces her another problem, a man, and she tries to eliminate it. But this way all the other problems attack her again. The the person who saved her from the chaos is her friend. She drags her out and encourages her. Her friend is doing the same head banging, praying movement. Either she's supporting her, sharing all the pain Florence has, or maybe she's already had experienced the same situation in the past. Strong sisterhood help again. Girl power force. Florence finally finds who she was looking for. Her chaotic self is there with a the man battling each other. Florence has a clear vision of that now from a distance. 
We shocked as we see that it's not a part of her anymore. I'm not you, the other Florence screams. And real Florence doesn't want to accept it. How could it be? How can she leave this huge part of her personality behind? They start fighting each other. The destructive part of her surrounded by all the men again, all the issues and troubles, banishes real Florence away. So she leaves it all behind, killing her destructive other. As we see dead body in the pool. It happened, she does feel the power now, the rage, the energy and the intoxicating freedom. She can't rest in the purgatory Mattel anymore. She changes her clothes as if it opens another page and runs off. Too fast for freedom, Florence sings as she's on top of a car, crossing LA streets and reaches the night sky. We see all the different flashbacks to the previous chapters, reminding us what we've, along with Florence, been through. We made full circle from a car crash and back, and we're finally out of the dark cave, just like in the teaser. The final chapter starts. In third eye, everything is left behind. The stones in the pattern of the storm now burning. The lover now is an ex-lover. All the problems looped can't touch Florence anymore. There's something positive eventually. There's light above her head. Going down on a lift could also represent a flashback of living in hell. There's men carrying stones from St. Jude. There's a mattress from what kind of man. Now choreography is different. There's no feeling of absorptivity. Florence is powerful. She pushes bad things away. The head banging movement brings her out pulls her out from hell at last. She's in different clothes and there's colors around her changing as well as the lightnings. Like she transports herself from this inside chaos to the reality. She grabs her jacket, one of which she usually wears in her How Big How Blue tour. She makes a sip of water and a final look in the mirror. She's ready. This is a reality because Rob, Florence and the Machine's guitarist appears and there's no music, no cuts. We follow them both to the stage. All the band is there and Florence repeats the same words. I'm the same, I'm the same, I'm trying to change. The show starts and the odyssey is over. We survived the destructive relationship, the self-hurting, the hell. We cried and we mourned with Florence and in the end we find the energy and power to leave it all behind and to break out from the loop. Florence showed us that all of this she transferred to the stage to her art, to us, the ones who listen to the album, watch the videos, go to the shows. Also, you know, the Odyssey could be just like this long process of getting ready before the show. Jokes are jokes, but this art therapy creating this film helped Florence to rehabilitate and become stronger, less chaotic and find her peace. I cannot express in words how much I love when artists put so much symbolism and meaning in their art. The Odyssey is a great example of this as well as the whole third phase of Florence and the Machine as a band. Vincent, Florence and all the members of an amazingly talented team did something truly incredible. And I highly recommend you to go and check the film out, even if you already watched it. Every time I watch it, and I did that already like 30 or 40 times, I find something new or see some things differently. Also watch other Vincent and Florence collabs on Ben's video Lover to Lover and one of my favorite music videos existing, Sweet Nothing, originally tracked by Calvin Harris which features Florence on the vocals. This video was really hard to think through, to write down, to record, to edit, to subtitle and to showcase to you. So we hope that you liked it. If you do, don't forget to leave a comment with all your thoughts on the Odyssey. We'd really like to read your interpretation of the narrative. Be sure to click on the corner for our playlist, which besides the main chapters, features a couple of interesting interviews. Give this huge video a huge like and subscribe to our channel to see more stuff from us. May the gods be with you and your mind be at peace. We love Florence and the Machine, we love you and now, peace out.